Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 24th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Did he actually came across some interesting Word document with macros? Of course, macros, nothing really new here. But what was different here was how the macro actually was attached to the document. If you are creating a visual basic for application macro in Word, there are actually two pieces that are typically being saved with the document. One is so called P code. That's an compiled version of the Visual Basic for Applications code. And then normally you also have a compressed copy of the source code attached. Now, 99% of Word documents will have both parts attached. And then you can just look at the macro source code in order to figure out what's happening. This particular version did actually have the original source code removed. So only the P code was left over, which had Didier resort to a decompiler that we actually wrote about a couple years ago, kind of predicting that this will happen where attackers will remove the source code in order to make reverse analysis more difficult. So if you're running into a document like this, uh, DDA's diary will explain how to analyze uh, these documents with his favorite tool, Ollie Dump. I remember a month or so ago, I did a report about Kaspersky releasing a blog post indicating that ASUS's update tool was infected with malware targeting fairly specific entities based on their MAC address. Back then, Kaspersky stated that there were additional victims and Kaspersky now did release an additional fairly long blog with a lot of details about the initial infections, but also with the name of a couple of different victims. First of all, a particular game was being infected by this attack or a very similar attack. This particular game, Infestation Survivor Stories, I don't think it's very popular. It was named the worst video games of all time. And also the servers operating this game were taken offline end of 2016. Another game that also was infected by this particular attack was a more popular first person shooter game point blank. Very similar malware here and now somewhat different functions and so how it was exactly being injected. But again, it also was signed with valid certificates that as of early April were still not revoked. One of the hallmarks of these type of attacks is that all the malware or I should say the infected normal software that's being distributed here is first of all distributed by the vendors themselves and secondly includes valid code signatures which according to Kaspersky indicates that the attacker likely was able to infect developers and they're guessing here that uh, what they're seeing kind of matches a trojan link.exe program that has been distributed in the past as part of the Microsoft developer tools. If you remember, uh, this sort of similar to the backdoored version of Xcode that was distributed a couple years ago. So something similar could have happened here just with uh, Visual C instead of uh, Xcode. But Kaspersky doesn't really have sort of any strong evidence uh, other than showing that the binaries were compiled with Visual C. And security company Netscope found an interesting malicious use of Google Sites. Uh, yesterday I talked about Azure and how Azure sometimes is used to host malware. In this case, Google Sites was used. Now, uh, Google actually has some filters in place to prevent uh, malicious uses of Google Sites. But in this case, the actual malicious file was stored within Google's file cabinet, which is apparently not 
subject to the same restrictions as Google Sites. Once a user connected to it, it would then download additional banking malware. The data was interestingly exfiltrated using SQL. Now, one tricky issue with uh, using a direct SQL connection like this is that the malware actually needs to know SQL credentials in order to connect to SQL. Well, the attacker sort of thought about this somewhat and kept rotating these SQL credentials by updating a specific log file that did inform the malware about these credentials. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.